And so let's go back to basics with the trigonometric functions or the circular functions. So despite what you may have um, learned in years 9 or 10, um, the trigonometric functions come from the unit circle. So the unit circle is a particular circle, a circle with a centre at 0, 0, a radius length of 1, and hence it will have a circumference of 2 pi units. And so this unit circle is where we define our trigonometric functions, sine, cos and tan. So when we're measuring angles in the unit circle, it's important that we understand that we always measure those angles in an anti-clockwise clockwise direction from the positive x-axis. Um, and so we can measure reflex angles, we can measure, um, uh, we could actually go past 360 degrees and lap around the circle again. We could also measure negative angles by going in a clockwise direction from the positive x-axis. But it's important that we always remember that an angle in the unit circle is always measured in an anti-clockwise direction from the positive x-axis. Now before we go too much further we need to make sure that we're clear about radian measure. Um, and radian measure is simply another uh, scale or, or um, units that we use to measure angles. So we can measure angles in degrees and we can also measure them in radians. Now a radian, one radian is technically defined as the size of the angle that is created by moving one unit around the circumference of the unit circle. So we've already established that the unit circle has a circumference of 2 pi units. So that means that there must be 2 pi units around the circumference of the unit circle and hence 2 pi radians in one rotation. Um, so that means that 2 pi radians is equivalent to 360 degrees. And really when dealing with radians, um, this ratio is all that you need to remember. And then it's simply about fraction work. So if 2 pi radians is 360 degrees, well that means that pi radians is 180 degrees. And that means that pi on 2 or half of pi radians is 90 degrees. And we could go on and on. So really when dealing with radians, it's simply about having good fraction skills. So we can start with these basic points around our unit circle, remembering that we're measuring our angles from this positive x-axis in an anti-clockwise direction. So we have 0 degrees and 0 radians around at the right. If we turn 90 degrees in an anti-clockwise direction, we're now uh, at a position of 90 degrees or pi on 2 radians. Turn a further 90 degrees, we're at 180 degrees or pi radians. A further 90 degrees will take us around to 270 degrees or 3 pi on 2 radians. And a further 90 degrees yet again would take us around to 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. And as I said, we could keep going. So we could then talk about 5 pi on 2 radians, um, which is equivalent to 450 degrees. Um, so one and a quarter laps of a circle. We could also talk about negative pi on 2 radians, which would be about going uh, clockwise from the positive x-axis. Um, so negative pi on 2 radians would be in the same position as positive 3 pi on 2 radians. And then we can divide the circle up further. So if we divide each of those um, regions in half again, so we're now dealing with units of 45 degrees or pi on 4. And it's simply about being able to count. So um, if we move 45 degrees in an anti-clockwise direction from the positive x-axis, we end up at 45 degrees or pi on 4. A further 45 degrees is 90 degrees or 2 pi on 4, which is pi on 2. A further 45 degrees takes us to 135 degrees or 3 pi on 4 radians. A further 45 degrees takes us to 180 degrees or 4 pi on 4 radians, which is pi radians. 5 pi on 4 radians, 6 pi on 4 radians, which is 3 pi on 2 radians, 7 pi on 4 radians, 8 pi on 4 radians, which is 2 pi radians. And we can continue um, around in an anti-clockwise direction. We could have gone in a clockwise direction from 0 and um, uh, been moving in uh, negative um, angles. And we can divide the circle further into um, units of 30 degrees or pi on 6. And these are all fractions that go nicely into 180. So these are angles that we deal commonly with. And they're also quite important angles because they're angles that we can calculate exact values for the trigonometric um, ratios. And we'll talk about that a little later on. So dividing into units of 30 degrees, again, we're just stepping around in um, fractions that are 1 sixth of pi. 
Yeah. So our first, if we move anti-clockwise by 30 degrees from the positive x-axis, we're at an angle of pi on 6. A further 30 degrees, we're now at 2 pi on 6 or pi on 3. A further 30 degrees, we're now at 3 pi on 6 or pi on 2. A further 30 degrees, um, we're now at 4 pi on 6 or 2 pi on 3. A further 30 degrees, we're at 5 pi on 6. A further 30 degrees, we're at 6 pi on 6, which is pi. A further 30 degrees, we're at 7 pi on 6. A further 30 degrees, we're at 8 pi on 6, which is 4 pi on 3. A further 30 degrees, we're at 9 pi on 6, which is 3 pi on 2. A further 30 degrees, um, we're at 10 pi on 6, which is 5 pi on 3. A further 30 degrees, we're at 11 pi on 6. And yet again, another 30 degrees, and we're at 12 pi on 6, which is the same as 2 pi. So this is simply being able um, to work with fractions. Um, so these are, as I said, um, key um, points in the unit circle. These are angles that we deal with commonly. And so it's important to know these um, conversions uh, quite readily. So pi on 6 being 30 degrees, pi on 4 being 45 degrees, pi on 3 being 60 degrees, and pi on 2 being 90 degrees. And again, I always come back to that ratio. I in particularly remember that 180 degrees is pi. So if I'm trying to work out what pi on 3 is, well, that's just a third of 180 degrees and I'm working it out in that way in my head. So the other thing that we get from the unit circle is our definitions of sine, cosine and tangent. And if we take a point P on the circumference of the unit circle, and that point P can be defined by the angle that um, P has moved uh, around from the positive x-axis, so from the point 1, 0. Um, so the anti-clockwise angle that we've moved could define the position of P, so we'll call that theta. And then here we get our first definitions of sine and of cos. So cos of theta um, is the x-coordinate of this point P, the point P being the point on the unit circle that has moved 30, uh, sorry, theta degrees around from the positive x-axis. And sine of theta is the y-coordinate of this same point. So we're always remembering that cos of theta is to do with the x-coordinate of the point on the unit circle. Sine of theta is to do with the y-coordinate of the point on the unit circle. Now to deal with tangent, we need to, um, funnily enough, introduce a tangent. So we're always dealing with the tangent at the point 1, 0. And um, t we'll extend out our radius through P and we'll call the point where this radius joins with that tangent Q. And the y-coordinate of this point is to do with tangent. So the x-coordinate of this point is always going to be 1. Um, but the y-coordinate of this point is called tan of theta. Okay, so um, this is the uh, point where uh, a radius that is at an angle of theta meets with that tangent. The y-coordinate of that point is tan of theta. And so we have uh, our definitions of sine, cos and tan in the unit circle. And we can see that how we, as we change theta, we can see how sine, cos and tan are going to change. So um, sine starts off being zero, gets larger, gets smaller again, um, and then gets negative and back to zero again. Whereas cos starts out at one, gets smaller, gets bigger, gets smaller, gets bigger. Tangent starts at zero and gets bigger and bigger and bigger um, until uh, we have uh, that issue at the... Uh, y-axis where the radius is never going to meet the tangent um, and we can see that um, that these values how these values change as we change the value of theta and that's all going to going to relate to how we're going to construct the graphs of sine cos and tan